Okay, just because the market's become more challenging, and we all know that, that doesn't mean we give up on finding winners around here. It just means we've got to be a little more selective. So in a world where everybody's worrying about trade or 10-year uh, treasuries or inflation, what kind of stock will let you sleep at night? How about something like Centene, the health plan provider that's focused heavily on government-sponsored programs like Medicaid, Medicare? Centene doesn't need to worry about a commodity. It doesn't have any exposure to China. It's exactly the kind of stock that can work if you're concerned that an economy, this one, may be losing some steam. When the company reported Tuesday morning this week. It delivered a gigantic 29 cent earnings beat off a dollar 88 basis. It's slightly weaker than expected revenue, up 12.5 percent year over year, but we can challenge that. More importantly, while Centene Company it raised its full year earnings forecast, and it has game changing acquisition that could close soon, and that's what I care about. This was not a perfect quarter. Wall Street had a mixed response. Stock dipped nearly three bucks on Tuesday before bouncing back, including a nice dollar 17 move today. I think the numbers are better than they're getting credit for. So let's take a close look at Michael Nidorf, the chairman and CEO of Centene, find out more about how. This company's doing where it's headed, Mr. Nodoff. Welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Great to be here. Have a seat. Good Thank to see you. you. Now, I, I think that you probably agree with me, not necessarily because you want to tout your stock because you don't mm, do that. No. But the, this is a market that is making snap judgments and then doing homework later. Yours is a classic example. Immediately hit. Ever since then, working its way up as if people say, wait a second, why did I throw that away? We beat a quarter. By five cents. Right. We raise guidance by 18 on the core business. We learn something. Don't build in an acquisition until it closes. We call guidance down because the Fidelis acquisition was delayed a quarter. So we had right. to back that out. We're not going to do that anymore. But you know what? I got to tell you, I'm going to disagree with you. I didn't know that the t New York State Attorney General could hold this up since I thought it was a done deal myself. I would have completely agreed with your analysis to be able to include it. It was rational. You know, the AG is doing his job. Right. We have worked very well with the state. You know, the, the issue really is they had the, the churches, this is not something they do all the time. Right. And, and until they work through how to do it and what to do, That's a good point. it just takes long. Right. They only do it one time. They That's only right. have one shot. That's now, right. you talk a lot about scale in your conference call. And I want people, remember, we're not hedge fund managers who watch this thing. What does scale mean? I mean, you have all these 12.8 million people. What, what much more scale do you need? Well, we're, not, we're going to keep growing. You okay. either, get, either grow or get paid a whole lot more for staying the same. And, <laughs> and we want to grow. Okay. okay. And when you look at it, we're going to have probably a $65 billion run rate when this thing all gets closed, up from $48 billion last year. So it's, that's important. We're the largest Medicaid, the largest long-term care, the largest exchange. And we continue to grow those businesses. We have new products, new states we're bringing on. We're waiting to hear from a couple. I saw that Texas, Arizona, I mean, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. These are all additive, right? They are. There's one, there's one more contract in Pennsylvania that was contested. That's fine. We'll reapply. And, okay. You know, we prevailed twice. Third time is the charm. All right. Now, repeal in place clearly out of the way. No worries even about a midterm election at this point, are there? I think the midterm election may be stabilized some things. Okay. You know, and uh, that may be important. Really? Yeah. I mean, if we stabilize things and start to grow it again in terms mm -hmm. of the people want the, this exchange product. There's no getting away from it. Okay. Let me ask you something. I was talking to my wife the other day, and she says, I was talking about, we had this contest here. I said, there's this sage therapeutic. She said, well, that's one of those that has this drugs that cost a million dollars. I mean, what do you tell people these drugs that do cost, say, $800,000 a year for somebody? Well, I think, you know, one, people need to get what they, they need to get. Okay. But I, we're working with people to say, how do you take a responsible approach? Yes, how do you? Bring it down. Now, and we're working, for example, with Washu. Eventually, we're going to do some things where they, where they uh, invent a new product, come up with a new product. Then we're going to have some uh, property rights on it, intellectual property, so it gets sold where a dose is $100. So we have to start to do some of those kinds of things, or maybe $5. Okay. So we have to find ways to start to set examples to pull it down. And what is your, uh, let's say someone wants to contest what you're doing. One of our viewers is in a Centene property. They said, well, listen, I, I didn't, I, I put my, I, I, I put my uh, receipt in and, and they won't pay. What's the process? There's, a, there's an appeal process there's and we're through the company. And people sometimes try, try to jump too quickly that, oh, I'm going to take legal action or something. Right. If somebody's entitled to something, we want them to get it and they will get it. Okay. Uh, I see biosimilars coming in, and uh, I see uh, some of the big drugs coming off patent. 
Uh, what can you do to make it so that the biosimilars have uh, that, that are, are equal ha, are able to be approved more quickly? Can you lobby the, the FDA? The bioavailability is the same. Okay. That we will move to that. It has to be certified by the FDA. Bioavailability is the same in the drug. Then we go generic. Okay, good. Now, last thing, as I did want to mention, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch named you the uh, Band of the Year, and I just thought you should mention what you did in Ferguson, because I thought that was really amazing. Well, what we did is, Ferguson, when I became chairman of the National Urban League, mm -hmm. I learned what happened there could happen in 150 cities. Right. So we saw they needed jobs. We opened up a service center when others were pulling out. That gave all the small businesses incentive to stay. We worked and we fixed some of the police issues in, in mm -hmm. the whole region. And uh, a lot of other companies joined in and helped as well in the whole area. You know, uh, Enterprise and some mm -hmm. others were there as well. And so what we did is we've created a situation where property's coming back, people are happy, we have, we're at the schools. It's really fun to see. Well, it's a great story, and that's why I wanted you to tell. Okay, that's Michael Nydorf. Nydorf, he's the chairman and CEO of Centene. When this Fidelis acquisition closes, you're going to want to be in the stock, not that you shouldn't be in it right now. Thanks, Michael. Good to see Thank you. Thank you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.